Welcome back. It's another week of SEC baseball action alongside Travis Brown. I'm Billy Derek. Travis covers Texas A&M uh, for the Bryan College Station Eagle uh, for, uh, of course, all things Texas A&M athletics, but uh, specifically baseball right now. I know there's probably a lot of spring football buzz going on, basketball transfer portal stuff, but Travis Vanderbilt and A&M should be fun this weekend. Top 10 matchup. And uh, it wasn't kind. College Station was not kind to Vanderbilt the last time they made the trip out there in 2019. Should be should be an interesting weekend. Thanks for taking the time. Yeah, anytime. Let's start with this team. Uh, of course, Texas A&M under um, you know Jim Schlossnagel has you know kind of steadied the ship. You know he he is he's kind of come in and and he's he's done just fine. And and, and even this offseason, you get bring in a guy like a Brain Montgomery. Um, and you've got all kinds of offensive power that is up there with the likes of best teams in the country. So what what have you seen specifically from this team that makes them um, an Omaha contender and maybe even a national championship contender? Yeah, this is one of the best hitting teams I've ever covered, um, especially that top four or five of the lineup. I mean, they they uh, have three guys that are four guys at the top of the lineup who are uh, at least as of a week ago hitting. Uh, above uh, 400 in uh, with runners in scoring position um, can always seem to find that clutch hit. You have Jay Slaviolette and Braden Montgomery who are up there kind of challenging uh, Condon and from Georgia in the, in the home run race. And they're challenging each other for the team home run race uh, going. So it's just one of the best hitting teams that, that I've seen now A&M swung their way to the college world series two years ago in Jim Slosnagel's first season uh, and weren't quite as good hitting, but they were a good hitting team that year, uh, but they had really had no pitching. And it's really the, the emergence of some of these pitchers that's actually been one of the biggest storylines for, for A&M, especially uh, Ryan Prager, the Friday night starter, who is coming off a year of Tommy John surgery and has just mowed through the majority of his uh, starts this season. So, um, it, it's, it's as complete. It, it isn't, I wouldn't say it's a fully complete team. There's still some questions to be answered, but it's as complete of a team that A&M has had since Jim Schlossnagel has been in Aggieland. Let's talk more about that pitching. Uh, you mentioned Ryan Prager, who is up there with one of the best in, you know, in the conference statistically this season. And you got to have that dog at that bulldog up, up front, especially in the sec, you know, ha having that Friday night guy is so big. Who are some of the other guys? And, and rotation-wise, do they have three guys set? It, it, has that been set here in the last few weekends? And and do you know, uh, has it been announced yet for this weekend? Uh, yeah, we're actually going to talk to uh, to Schlossnagel here in about uh, uh, 30 minutes or so. So we'll get uh, that, that uh, answered here quickly on the rotation. But I would expect it to be the same as it's been for the majority of the season, and that's Prager uh, going into Tanner uh, Jones and then uh, – Justin Lampkin uh, finishing it out. The season started the first series. Tanner Jones wasn't ready, had a little bit of a, a back issue. And so they went uh, uh, Prager, uh, Sedeo, and Lampkin, Shane Sedeo. But that was a three lefty rotation, not something that Jim Schlossnagel has typically liked to do. He likes to mix it up, go lefty, righty, lefty, or righty, lefty, righty. Uh, when he when he has a rotation and, and has those options available to him. So they've entered Tanner Jones. Uh, Sedeo, uh, excuse me, Lampkin and uh, uh, Prager have been the more consistent of the two. Of course, Prager being extremely consistent. Tanner Jones has been a little bit up and down, um, but it sounds like that's where they're going to stick because the other options would be Sedeo, Chris Cortez, and those guys uh, Schlossnagel really has liked having out of the bullpen as kind of uh, long relief guys or even um, – uh, Cortez kind of coming in at the end of the games with the power that he throws. So those are the main. Oh, and then their 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 number one go to out of the pen is Evan Oshenbeck. Uh, uh, not necessarily power arm, but a guy who uh, hit, consistently hits the strike zone and, and gets guys out. And so you'll probably see him um, if if he comes in the game, he's going to close out as many innings as he possibly can in in a game and and finish the game out. Uh, usually because he, he's so consistent. So uh, that's kind of the the, the main pitching uh, names out there. You, you have uh, Brad Rudis, who will probably make an appearance uh, for a couple innings. Josh Stewart, who make a couple inning appearance. Brock Peary, some of these guys. But those have been some of the less consistent arms. Um, the, those those first guys are the guys that are, are 
you're guaranteed to see in the series this weekend. Let's go back to the first SEC series of the season for, for Texas A&M. They go down to Gainesville, obviously play a talented Florida team, but a team that's 17 and 14 right now. Um, you know, but at the time of this this series, you know, that wasn't a loss you could really shake your head at if you're Texas A&M. But all of a sudden now, you know, Florida seemingly loses every midweek and they, they got swept by Missouri last week. I know that, that was, what, four, five weeks ago already, but – what went wrong for AM? I know it was on the road. It's hard to win in the SEC on the road. Um, but I guess what did Florida do to to create pressure on AM and and why um, I guess why did they have success that weekend um, against the Aggies? Yeah, I, I know. I, I'll be honest. I was actually at the SEC basketball tournament during that series, so I was kind of keeping a, a a side eye on on the series as it was. Uh, uh, going on, but I know Ryan Prager had probably his worst start of the season. Uh, up until that game, he hadn't allowed a, a run, uh, or excuse me, a home run, and uh, they 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 took him deep uh, a couple times in that game, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, the, the starting pitching just wasn't consistent for AM in that series, and, and it was going to be a, a little bit of an offensive battle, and they couldn't necessarily get that, they couldn't swing their way to the win, so it, it was an un somewhat uncharacteristic pitching performance for AM uh in that series uh against Florida. They go to Starkville and, and take two out of three from Mississippi State and then uh they sweep Auburn at home. Auburn's uh, I still think is a solid Auburn team. Um Vanderbilt also swept Auburn at home and then this past weekend which I think is a really impressive series win for the Aggies in Founders Park in in, in Columbia beating South Carolina. Um South Carolina was able to take one um, you know, that 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 uh, that Sunday game. But a and M. I I mean, what in these SEC series, did, did you learn anything about this team, you know, throughout these series, you know, at, even after some of the non-conference and specifically with South Carolina? Um, like what what did South Carolina do in game three to, to kind of salvage there? And and I guess what I'm trying to get at is, you know, when A&M loses, what what are maybe some of the reasons? Because it, it's it doesn't happen often. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it usually comes down to pitching. Uh, that was a one of Justin Lampkin's uh, uh, worst outings of of, of the year. Um, uh, gave up, uh, I believe, a couple of home runs and uh, just wasn't as consistent in finding the strike zone. You know, last season, uh, A&M's, it, they, they had a, a decent offense. It was, again, the pitching that kind of held them back. And especially last year, it was uh, issuing too many free, free bases, whether it be uh, hit batters, walks um or, or or even some steals letting some guys get in wild pitches um just kind of those kind of things and that kind of crept back in a little bit uh in in some of those losses when they do you know in the sec guys are going to hit solo home runs you can have the best pitcher uh in the conference and he's going to get taken deep a few times in the season mm -hmm. but it's all it's usually about mitigating the damage uh in front of that guy you don't want to issue walks uh, hit batters, things like that, to make a solo shot into a two or three run home run. Uh, and usually, when AM uh, loses, it's because they're um, inconsistent on the uh, inconsistent on the strike zone and and issuing too many uh, free passes that turn uh, home runs into to multiple uh, uh, run at bats. Yeah. All right, we we uh, we got our background info on the Aggies. Let's turn our attention to this weekend, uh, which I think is the best series maybe even in the country definitely in the sec um and only one of them of course is on national tv well not not even national tv sec network which i think is a college baseball issue anyway the atmosphere this weekend should be great um and, and i did see um i think this was a tweet from you that renovations are coming soon which is going to be really cool there to bluebell park but uh give me some of the background I, i've never i haven't been out there and it is a tough trip from nashville um, and it's going to be a tough atmosphere to play in for this Vanderbilt team. But kind of paint the picture for me. What's it like covering a game there? What what is the the, the fan base culture like there? Is it similar to football, where um, you know you? I mean, it's obviously not as many people, but you do have the bubbles going on and everything. So kind of paint the picture for me of what 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 a game is like there at Bluebell Park. Yeah, it's it's kind of quirky. Um, they have a a a, a real quirky the, the the raggy section two hundred three up in the upper deck is a uh, uh, the, the kind of fan, um, uh, the, the main rowdy section of, of the baseball. They have their own traditions, their own 
not like the yells that you hear at football, but their own little goofy chants and things like that. They love to get on uh, opposing teams. They're right over the visiting dugout. They uh, they'll yell at the uh, opposing first base coach to get in at the, the, the coach's box if he's not standing there. Just kind of quirky uh, little things that they've uh, developed uh, over the years, and uh, you know, uh, will all constantly be on the pitcher. Uh, chanting his name and things like that. And of course, there's the the, the ball five chance that that uh, so many other people have uh, have taken on. So there are many fan bases where if uh, a pitcher throws four straight balls in a row, they'll start getting ball five and and go up. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the the ballpark the right literally just feet over the right field wall is train tracks that trains go by constantly, and uh, so you'll you might a pitcher might be releasing a pitch right when the train blows its horn and the fans will uh, kind of always play a game of holding up the many fingers as they think engines are going to be on uh, the train. It, it's a very unique atmosphere and in a really good way. It's, it's a cool um, college baseball atmosphere um, and, and one that's can be pretty, especially it, it's really kind of interesting and, and unique to see when you get a midweek game of a, a directional school come in who doesn't, see that kind of fan support mm-hmm. and uh, they get all on top of a pitcher or some hitters and, and you can tell it affects uh, it affects those guys uh, and gets in their head a little bit. So it's a pretty fun place to watch a baseball game. Yeah, and it should be fun this weekend, especially anytime you get a top 10 team uh, in there. I'm sure it's even more fun. But last time Vanderbilt went out there, they lost two or three and there's even a story about their flight being delayed and Corbin has talked about how unhappy he was about that. And, and there's other stories, other accounts of it, and, and how Vanderbilt, and that was early in the season. Of course, later they end up winning the national title, but that's how things can change. And, you know, even if, say, one of these teams gets swept, it's not it's not the end of it for, for either of these teams. But what do you look at? I'm not sure how much of a look you've gotten at Vanderbilt. Obviously, the pitching is strong, but offensively, they're not as, as power heavy, as home run heavy, or reliant as AM. How do you see this matchup this weekend shaping up? Yeah, that's that's the this year in the SEC, and I know this is a little bit cliche, but I think it's really the case in this year. The 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 that margin is so thin. I mean, mm-hmm. we were talking about that Auburn team. That Auburn team has every right to be a has top twenty five talent on their team for sure, but they're they're getting beat up through the SEC just because of the the parity and the amount of talent that's uh, in in this conference, especially this year. As it's kind of like basketball, that it's just older. Um, than it usually is, um, and it's a lot of experience, and so I think you're you're seeing that on the field. So it's kind of like nothing is really will surprise me, especially this weekend against two really really good SEC, SEC teams. Um, the little bit of an X factor uh, that I didn't mention about Bluebell is that if the uh, the wind is coming from the south, which it almost always is at this point in the season, it is it is a home run derby park. I mean you. Mm. Jackson Appel, AM's catcher, he, he bats cleanup, but he is not a power hitter. They have all their power hitters uh, in front of him. He's just a really good contact hitter so that they know they're, if they get guys on, he's going to move them around. He just reached out and poked three opposite field home runs uh, against, uh, uh, oh, who did they play on, on Tuesday? Um, uh, UTSA. Uh, yeah. And he came into the season with three home runs, just got poked the ball out there, got it into the jet stream and all three went out, including the walk off uh, winner in the bottom of the ninth. So, I mean, you can, if you're a hitter, you can get okay contact on it sometimes and watch it sail uh, into the, the, the scoreboard or into uh left field at, at Bluebell park. So um, that's always an X factor. Pitchers got to keep the ball low. Uh, and it got to mitigate um, the, the the traffic on the bases, um, and that can be the the, the biggest X factor. So, I, I, I will admit I haven't looked as much into Vanderbilt yet as I as I was uh, going to the, for the, this this um, uh, weekend. But I know that anybody can come in and swing and, and, and hit for power uh, in in Bluebell because of uh, the way it's built and the kind of jet stream. It has um, the, the biggest test for AM is is going to see how that pitching is continuing to develop and grow um, into being consistent. Um, I think Prager is, of course, going to be consistent. You're going to have Oshenbeck, who's going to be consistent and throw strikes and get outs. Um, but beyond that, 
it, it could be a little bit of a question mark. And and the X factor for AM is if those guys can throw strikes and keep the ball in the ballpark. That's Travis Brown from the uh, is it the Bryan College Station Eagle? Is that is that what it is or college? That's, that's correct. You... Yeah. Okay, there we go. The Bryan yeah, College Station little, Eagle. We have a little Twin City kind of action thing going down here uh, in this part of Texas, where Bryan's the county seat, but College Station's now kind of the bigger town. And there, I mean, you wouldn't know that you drove from one into the other. So it is Bryan College Station down here. I like it. I got to get out there. That's that's a fun trip. And uh, obviously, it's going to be tough this weekend for Vanderbilt. I'm excited for Carter Holt and Ryan Prager. Uh, you'll you'll be there, I, I would assume, and get to see a couple of really good pitchers going at it. It's going to be fun this weekend. But, Travis, thank you so much for taking the time and enjoy this series. You got it.